So, um, Nate, would you like to say a few words in honor of uh, our Cicero? Of course. Is there a little Of course. <laughs> okay, everybody, uh, as you can tell, this is an impromptu speech, but let's give uh, some serious thought to the meaning of today's occasion that we're honoring. We are here in celebration of not the establishment of the State of Israel, the re-establishment of the State of Israel. And that's an important thing to remember. And unfortunately, we live in a time when, and it's sad to say, the legitimacy, the very legitimacy of the State of Israel is always called into question and attacked and otherwise uh, made to explain itself. And what a sad thing that our people simply have to go and expend resources and time and energy just having to justify our existence. So it's important to remember that it's the reestablishment of the State of Israel that we're celebrating today, and we all need to think about that, and we all need to give a great debt of gratitude to Hashem for restoring us to our land. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Nate, for saving the night. And, um... Our guest speaker for the evening just arrived, and um, Rebetzin Yakobian has become a very, very good friend of mine since I moved here to Houston, and she's really been a great person to befriend here, and she's been a great support, and um, she's very special. She always has beautiful insights and wonderful things to say, so I hope that you will enjoy what she has to say tonight. That was very sweet. It's up to you. Okay, I feel like we don't really need the mic. Lower. Do we need the mic? You might. Put it lower. Okay, I'll just hold it. It's okay. okay, so Chaviva has become a dear friend of mine also. Thank you, Chaviva. And she did ask me today to speak for today. And of course, I said, sure, no problem. I hope I can make it in time. So I hope I'm not too late while you're enjoying your falafels and all. And she asked if I could speak about Eretz Yisrael. So I just missed what you had to say, so hopefully I'm not going to repeat anything, but it's a topic and a place that's very, very, very dear to my heart, and I thought I'd share a little bit, like, thoughts, like, what came to mind about Bela to Slade, and just, just, just that. Um, people like to classify people a lot and ask them, are you Zionistic, are you Zioni, are you this, are you that, do you go to the army, do you do this, do you sing Hatech about you, all sorts of questions, and I just like to answer, I'm a person that really, really loves Eretz Yisrael with all my heart. And you could call it whatever you want to call it. But I really love Eretz Yisrael with all my heart. Um, for those of you who maybe don't know, I actually, my childhood was spent growing up in the West Bay to like a little settlement, um, really like feeling the love to the land. I would travel to family who lived like in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv and they'd be like, oh, you live over the Green Line, it must be so dangerous. And I had the most beautiful, carefree, in a way safe, sounds funny, childhood that there could be. It's not even comparable to what children in the States have. Incredible. And then my parents left Israel, and I felt like such a, like I was leaving. Like I felt like I was really like deserting them. I, I felt awful when my parents left and moved to L.A. I felt like, how could you possibly do such a thing that's so disloyal to our homeland. And then I was lucky again to rejoin on, go back to Israel for my seminary years post high school to go and study for a year in Israel. And during, towards the end of that year, actually in this season, I started dating my husband and eventually I got engaged to him and I got married in Israel and I lived there for a few years and my first son was there, was born there. And eventually we moved to Houston. We're actually celebrating our 18th anniversary in Houston on May 14th. So it's really not far. Um, so that's our two-year trip, turned to 18 years and going. Um, but interestingly, now when I go with my son to Israel, and he's now in Jerusalem, but the Saturday woman who was in B'nai Brak, so somehow he feels like he's the tour guide, and I'm the elderly mother, so he starts telling me, like, over here, there's this, and then over here, there's this, and it's really interesting to hear, and sometimes I say, it's really, you know, before you were even born, over here, me and Abba dated on our third date, and over here, I went to shop for things for my brother's bar mitzvah, and over here, there used to be the zoo, but it's no longer even here, because they moved, and over here, there used to be this yeshiva, but the yeshiva moved out, and they now built apartment buildings, and he looks at me like, oh, 
Mm -hmm. My mother was actually here before. Like maybe it's just really cute that he takes the role of like tour guide for his elderly mother who maybe wasn't in Bnei Brak or Jerusalem or some of the other cities. One other thing that I wanted to tell you that I think, how many of you have been to Israel? Anybody in the room? Oh, okay, warms my heart to like speak to like people who've been to Israel. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, great. So I teach in a school called Emory Wiener. Emory Wiener, has anyone ever heard of that school? It's in Houston, it's a Jewish school. It's a non-denominational, pluralistic middle and high school. One of the nicest things that they do is they send their seniors, their 12th grade class, every year to Israel. And some of those kids, many of them, have not been ever before. And some of them are not even Jewish. And they spend their whole high school career, their whole high school years, like waiting for this trip. They just left yesterday. And every year they have like a nice ceremony before they leave. And every year on the day that they leave, I wake up in the morning feeling like the kids are going home. They are finally, finally going home. And I pray that those kids, that some of them have never been to Israel and are not so connected, maybe will get like sparked or ignited or something will turn in them that doesn't happen in Houston, that maybe will miraculously happen in Israel. There are so many miracles that happen in Israel all the time. Those of you that have been to Israel, if you could recall your first time or any of your visits, have you felt anything miraculous? Has anyone ever felt something special? I, I feel like everywhere I go, people have stories to sh share, feelings to say, Israel is such a special place. There are some sukim in the Torah that tell us about Israel and how special it is. One of the verses talks about that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Another verse speaks about that God's presence is in Israel everywhere you go, and it's really felt that it is. One of the nicer verses is in Zechariah, and it speaks about, it's a verse that the Jews got during the exile about a prophecy that today we see come true before our eyes. It speaks about that one day there will be elderly people sitting on the benches in Jerusalem, and there will be children and young adults strolling the streets and playing in the streets and it's almost like this prophecy literally comes alive before our eyes in the streets of Yerushalayim. And it's incredible to see how that has changed. I think like really, 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 everybody in this room, if you've been to Israel, I encourage you to go more. If you haven't yet gone to Israel or you're not inspired enough, I had some of my students do this today for tomorrow. Um, just open Google and look at modern day Israel and see how much modern day Israel has contributed to us. The list of Israeli inventions is remarkable for a country that's turning 71 tomorrow. It's really, really impressive, right? Really, really impressive. So if you could go to Israel, go visit. If you could get inspired, get inspired. One of the things that we decided when we moved here, and I heard this from a friend who moved to the States, is if you can't be in Israel, you could really try to bring Israel to you. And we've really tried over the years to bring Israel to us in any like any way that, that that we could, including the artwork that's in my house. And we flooded with Harvey. The last thing on the list to get to was like destroyed artwork. We had just moved into a new house and had walls of different sizes and shapes. And it was like heartbreaking for me to look at stuff that like got destroyed photo-wise. So I like left it for like a year and a half. So this year was finally my year and a half mark where I started putting up artwork. And we have like a lot of you all welcome to my house. You can come visit. We have like a lot of nice like Israel artwork and a few more that are going to be going up on the walls at some point. They're just, just places in Israel, places that we've visited, photos that we've seen. I just think to kind of like bring it home. If you can't be there, you could at least bring part of Israel to you. So anyways, happy birthday, Israel. And thank you for listening. Have a good night.